So today we are going to be doing a formulation in two different ways for a product that I have never actually done on the channel before. This is not something that I have tackled with you. I have not given any real content about this and uh, it's for a very good reason. And I will tell you what we are making and why I haven't done any content on it in the past in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another day of our Rose Cosmetic Infusions line. And today we are going to be continuing on with this cosmetics journey by making a serum. Now, why am I making a serum and why have I never done it on the channel before? Well, the reason why I'm making the serum is because this is the cosmetics portion of the you know new format that we're doing for year four. And I don't want to do the exact same thing every freaking week or a month or whatever. You know what I mean? So here's a face soap and uh, here's a lotion and you know what I mean? I'm not going to do that. I really do want to mix it up and really push our boundaries with our cosmetic formulations and all of the jazz so we can get a better cosmetic knowledge as far as what these particular ingredients will do for our hair or our skin or what have you. So that's reason number one as to why I'm going to make the serum. As far as why I haven't made serums before, as far as cosmetics go, especially when you're talking about things that go on your face and they're needed for a specific purpose, you know, whatever, uh, it's, it's a very interesting thing for soap makers to do this. Now I received education in this field and I have, you know, obviously with my college background and then I've done my cosmetic certifications, read all the books, done all the things. And so I have a working knowledge of the cosmetics world and the actual formulation world and understand that this is a very difficult thing to just give to someone in a video. Lotion, I'm basically fine with because with all of my experience with lotions, yes, you can do those. You can do them at home. You don't have to be, you know, certified and have this big knowledge base underneath you in order to get it done. Serums can be a little bit more tricky though, and I haven't felt super comfortable actually doing that. And so for that, I am going to give a recipe of sorts today. It's actually two different recipes, but to actually get the full depth and scope of what a cosmetic is and what you're looking for in a face serum, that is not something that I'm going to be delivering in one video. So if we continue on with serums throughout this, if you guys like this, then we can consider adding some more like masterclass type things for cosmetics, but just high level, I really do recommend you going and getting your books and getting your certifications and taking classes, dedicated coursework. So you understand what all of these ingredients are and do so you can substitute and swap out in your formulations. But enough about me talking here, let's go to the making and we'll talk about the two different types of serums that I'm making, really two different consistencies while we talk about how you actually formulate, big picture, a serum. Okay, so we are just going to rip the band-aid off and work with uh, formulating actual, what I would consider cosmetics in this video. Now, I understand that technically, legally speaking, anything that is not a soap is a cosmetic. So our bath bombs and our lotions, our scrubs, et cetera, and so forth, which we've done a whole lot on the channel, but I've never gone any further than a lotion with you for a couple reasons. The biggest reason is going to be cosmetic formulations can be, when you're looking at these types of cosmetics, kind of complicated in that you're working with actives. Now we have put extracts into our lotions from time to time, but you know, they're kind of easy. You have a 1% extract into a general lotion formula that consists of primarily your waters and your oils, and then your emulsifiers. And so you're forming an emulsion and that's all well and good. With a 
again, what I would consider an actual cosmetic, you're going to be upping the ante and not only including an extract, but we're looking at things like uh, vitamins, incorporating vitamins like vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin A, or incorporating uh, your esters or incorporating your actives. And so within this recipe, what we are going to do, we're going to be making a face serum, same face serum, just a two different ways essentially and really the ways are do we figure out our percentages based on our amount of total water in it or do we figure out our percentages based on the overall formulation weight i tend to always want to go based on the overall formulation weight that is why i give you everything in percentages so if you want to make 40 ounces of something you then plug that in times 83 percent you have your rose water times 0.5 for your xanthan five percent for your glycerin two percent for your rose oil and two percent for your fractionated coconut etc and so forth so i would prefer to do it that way but i am going to do it two different ways so you can see what ultimately happens with the two consistencies and textures overall when we get to the testing part now for this for our actives we are going to be using hyaluronic acid as well as a retinol both at one percent and we are additionally going to be using a rose extract at 2.5 percent and in addition to that we will be putting in our essential oils i'm just going to use frankincense at 0.5 percent and our preservative at 0.5 percent as well now, one of the things that you're dealing with when you're looking at your cosmetic formulations and you're playing with actives, you're going to be paying attention to that pH a whole lot more than you would normally kind of pay attention to it with a standard lotion. Lotion is primarily water. You also have your fatty acids in there because of your, your, um, your oils and whatnot. And so the pH of your lotion is going to be around the same pH of your skin. So around five to 6% usually, or I'm sorry, five to six, usually pretty neutral. But when you are dealing with your actives that have low pHs, the hyaluronic acid, for example, that's pH is between three and four and your retinoids, as well as things like vitamin C or your panthenol with your, you know, vitamin B5, if you start playing around with too many of these actives or messing around with the wrong preservative for the pH range that you're going for, which should be targeted between that four and six mark, basically, so slightly acidic, basically the same pH of our the skin on our face. If you start playing around with the wrong ingredients within all of that, you can really mess the pH of the actual solution up. Now, what does that mean in practice? Well, it could mean that everything could fall out of solution. It could mean, theoretically, that you could do damage to your skin or the end user by misusing your actives. Very, very rare. The biggest thing is you're going to end up with a solution with a formulation that essentially has made the other... Uh, ingredients that you've put into it, the actives and whatnot, uh, inert. You, you've essentially killed them off because you are playing around with the pHs a little bit too much. So it does get to be a little bit tricky. So my first recommendation when you are messing with cosmetic formulations like this rose serum would be really sticking to one or two primary actives that you want to play, play with and keeping them within their usage range and making sure that those actives are going to work really well within your total pH of your overall system. So again, your water plus your glycerin plus your frac frac plus your oils. We've got a little bit of oils going on with all of this and that you find a preservative that works well within that system. So there are a lot of different preservatives out on the market. We've done a video on it before talking about the different big types of preservatives. Absolutely go check that out if you need more help with that. But it's one of the reasons why I never actually give you a specific preservative to use because our, our preservation systems are pretty varied and everybody kind of finds what they like more. I would never go out there and tell you, well, go buy this one particular preservative for this because you may very well have a preservative within your inventory that works really well in the pH range that we're working with, again, between four and six. So... With the serums and everything that I'm putting in, I am putting in this hyaluronic acid at 1% again, and I am going to be using the powdered version of all of this and 
making it and mixing it in with a little bit of the retinol, which is a liquid form, as well as the extract before incorporating it into my overall with the water, the xanthan gum, the glycerin, the rose oil, and the fractionated coconut. It is very important with hyaluronic acid to not go above that 2% mark for most cosmetic applications. The biggest reason for that is you already have a humectant going on in this with your glycerin. And so, and hyaluronic acid is also a humectant. And so if you are working with too many humectants, you can end up with plumping, which is actually a good thing depending on what area of the face you're wanting, but also it can lead to redness and irritation. So definitely that is not something that you should ever want within your cosmetic formulations. And so playing around with higher percentages of your hyaluronic acids or your retinols, it, it can lead to essentially upset skin for the most part, most of the time, or again, just kind of overusing expensive ingredients because actives are expensive. And so less is more is definitely something that you should keep in mind when you are working with cosmetics formulations. So going overboard with your essential oils, going overboard with your extracts, going overboard with any of your actives, any of your vitamin enhancements, all of the things, ultimately you run the risk again of skin irritation or just kind of wasting the ingredients when you don't really need to. So with this, I've heated both phases. So my water phase as well as my active phase to around 150 degrees for both of them. And at that point, I will mix the two together, mix them well, and then after that is cooled down, I'm going to add into this my essential oils and my preservative. The essential oils, depending on the essential oils that you're using, you could run the risk of your essential oils essentially burning off. I don't like using that term. It's not an accurate term, but point is under 120 degrees is going to be the best bet for your essential oils and is usually always the best bet for your preservatives because overheating your preservatives can render that preservative ineffective and so in which case you are dealing with your, your a solution because it has a lot of water in it you know growing all the nasties and we definitely don't want that now the incorporation of the xanthan gum this is definitely a different thing than we've done in you know lotions before because usually we use an emulsifier right we are effectively using the xanthan gum as a form of thickener it's not really an emulsifier to like really practical methods but it is a thickener that will also help suspend all of the actives that we have put within this the glycerin is also going to help out with the suspension of the different actives as well as the application to the face. So it will help pull some of these heavier particles through the skin. Now that is another conversation in and of itself as far as actives go, which is one of the reasons why I've never really had these conversations and done these videos on the channel. Because when you're getting into the different weights of your actives, so your hyaluronic acids versus your retinols or your retinoids, and whether or not it actually penetrates the skin and what you need to do in order to help pull those active ingredients into the skin. It becomes a very difficult thing to discuss via a YouTube video. Again, I really do recommend you get this information from, you know, taking a class. If you're genuinely interested in figuring out how cosmetics work, take a course. There are lots and lots of courses out there. You can get your certification. It can be a fun time for sure but they're going to be able to approach this in a way that won't get them canceled because when I start talking about whether or not something penetrates the skin deeply and if we can even legally do something like that past, you know, the first like 10-ish layers of skin, it, it becomes a big old thing and I get a lot of opinions in my comments and I don't like it because this is not something that I am genuinely trained to do. I was trained, I wasn't trained to teach it, I was trained to do it, if that makes sense. So with this particular serum, everything is below 120 degrees at this point, mixing everything in, making sure that hyaluronic acid, which was a little bit clumpy, is getting worked in really well. And this will be my serum number one. Second serum, I am going to use the actual, just the, the total weight of the thing to formulate. And we're going to see the difference in consistencies while we talk a little bit more about all of these active ingredients and what they are doing.
So yeah, second formulation, effectively it's the same method, except instead of doing it to the percentage of water that we're using, we're going to use it to the percentage of, or the amount of total, uh, of total for solution that I want to make. And so we're looking at 58 grams. It changes slightly. It changes slightly in that everything increases a little bit while your water kind of decreases. But with this particular method, really, I would always recommend doing this by total weight of your product and not by the overall weight of your water, but you can do it both ways. Theor hypothetically, if you're messing around with this, it's not going to have any, I don't know, like bad, n nothing bad is going to happen if you do it the reverse and just, you know, measure everything off the, of the percentage of the water. It's just... It's more precise to do it this way, so I really do prefer it. And also, in the end result, you will see what I like about this, you know, more and the overall consistencies of the two. So let's go check this out and see, you know, what I'm even talking about with these things. Okay, now pay attention to the different consistencies with these two while we talk about the actives that I selected. So reasonably, because of the rose and everything that we've been doing with rose, it's been a really good for anti-aging, right? And so it has really good uh, rejuvenating properties, collagen boosting, wrinkles, all of that jazz. And so I chose my actives, the hyaluronic acid and my Retin-A, well, my retinol, in order to really lean into the anti-aging properties of the rose. And so the hyaluronic acid is really going to be good for skin plumping. Obviously, it's a humectant, as well as skin rejuvenation and repair. Again, that's a different subject in and of itself because it has a very heavy weight anyway. And the retinol is also going to be uh, similar to that as well. Vitamin A is going to be really good for collagen rebuilding for a slight exfoliation. So you'll be using a chemical exfoliation in that, helping with acne, wrinkles, all the jazz. And so the reason why I chose these two actives is A, they work really beautifully together, but they also work really beautifully with all of the benefits that we've been talking about within the rose. And so would I suggest uh, doing something like different and using different actives? Sure. I mean, whatever your skincare needs are, definitely lean into that. Would I su suggest doing more than two actives? I really wouldn't. I don't think you should be doing really more than one active if this is your first, you know, your first jump out of the gate when you're making, again, what I would consider a proper cosmetic. Because the ingredients are so expensive, the actives are very pricey, and you really want to be testing things individually, one at a time, determining which ones you like better before you start putting them into an overall formulation that you're going to sell to your end user. That said, this is very rose heavy. There's a lot of rose going on in all of this. It's included in every single bit except for the fractionated coconut, the xanthan gun, and obviously within the, the actives, although my extract is also a rose. Now with these two, I'm testing them both because one of the things that I don't like about serums is that if they are too thick and tacky, they can definitely cause pilling and that's bad if you're going to put lotion on over it. Now with the formulation, the second formulation, it's definitely a thinner formulation. This is why I like one of the many reasons why I like to do it the accurate way, which is to measure according to the overall amount of the thing that you want to make. One of the reasons why I really like this is because it's not as tacky as the first. It's not as thick, and there's reasonably no real indication that it's going to do any pilling. Now, the tackiness of a serum can be very good if you are going to be layering this underneath your lotions, your face lotions, your makeup, et cetera, and so forth. Really gives everything something to grip onto for sure. So here's another you know shot of the two and how they're different. Again, the first one, I don't recommend doing your formulation so that that's the only thing you take away from that. I know this is kind of all over the board. I don't exactly know how to pro approach cosmetics with you guys. I know you're going to give me some direction on how to do it and what you're interested in in the comments, and we can continue on. For actives in and of themselves, specifically vitamins, we will be talking more about that in tomorrow's video because you're going to be making a rose face cream that can be paired with this. And so definitely, you know, stay tuned for that. Come and be part of the thing. I don't know, you know, whatever, all the YouTube -y things. And yeah, I'm back. There's cosmetics. It's a rose serum. I actually really like it. Been using it. It's a fun time. There's also a recipe if you want to use it, I guess. And there it is two different serums, basically 
same ingredients, but they're being put in in different ways based on how you're actually calculating your percentages. Now, for me, the first one that we did, it was a little bit tacky on the skin, and I don't hate that, I don't mind that. A nice tacky base is a good idea for you know your makeup applications and all the jazz, but I usually use my serums at night, and I do like to layer a whole bunch on top of each other because I'm weird and I just like the process of different serums and stuff, and so I don't really want the tackiness before I put on another serum because it's going to start pilling and doing very interesting things on the skin, rubbing off all the jazz. And so I did prefer the second version a whole lot more. Now for serums like this, as far as the actives within all of it, yeah, I like it. It's a nice well-rounded blend of the actives with you know the rose incorporations and everything. And for that, I love it. I like that it was naturally pink. That's super cute, you know, in love with that too. But for the rest of it, what do you guys think? Do you, do you like the serums? Do you like the, the idea of doing serums and creams and more actual cosmetic things? Like I said, I really do think we should have dedicated coursework for stuff like this before just coming to a soap maker. But if you guys don't seem to care, then you're fine with it, then that's fine too. I just don't wanna ever lead you guys down a path that ends up being overly confusing. And considering I don't teach cosmetics, I teach soaps and bath bombs and lotions and scrubs, I don't know that this is really the best thing for me. But you let me know, did I do an okay job? If I didn't do an okay job, be nice about telling me that. You know what I mean? But anyway, I am out of here. I hope you guys had fun today. Tomorrow we're going to be doing another honest to goodness cosmetic in the form of a face cream. And we're going to talk about the incorporations of the rose and all the jazz in that as well. So definitely subscribe, like all the things to be notified when you come so you can come back. You know, the things I'm supposed to say at the end of these videos, I said it. Check, check. Sudzers, thank you for existing. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being my people, my friends. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for being in my DMs this week, giving me support. I really do appreciate it. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. Everything's awesome. And yeah, I will eventually get less busy. I appreciate having people to talk to that understand the busy. So thank you again. I'm out of here, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of rose and rose hip infused, not soapy, cosmetic, soapy fun. Bye.